Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Sean. I'm into all things visual communication and content creation. And today we're diving into the world of photography. Now this video is made especially for those of us who are thinking about starting photography, either as a career or as a hobby, or you just love taking images and you want to get better and you really want to take photography seriously. You want to start out into the world of photography and you just don't know where to begin. Now this video is a guide on the kind of things or the aspects of photography that you need to focus on as a beginner and it's not necessarily a video that is going to dive deep into um, things like the type of cameras, the type of gear, the type of equipment you're going to need because I think that the things I'm going to talk about in this video are very foundational whether you are using high-tech gear or simple cameras or even your smartphone. So yes this video is for you thinking about starting photography Maybe you just bought a camera and you know you've thrown it away because you don't really know where to even begin and it all just seems confusing or maybe you really love taking pictures with your smartphone and you're not sure how to really you know get into that zone of taking excellent awesome photographs all the time now this video is also not an in-depth tutorial on the technical details of all the aspects of photography you know because this video is actually designed to be a short guide just like a signpost to say, hey, I want to learn how to do photography. Okay, this is what you need to look at. This is what you need to focus on. These are the basics. And I'm going to share with you five things that I think are very fundamental. Five basic things about photography that you need to start learning or you need to pay attention to, to begin your journey into becoming a great photographer. Now, I'm going to break down all these five tips into different chapters. So if you check out the video description, you can just jump to any of the chapters or any of the sections if you want. But I would encourage you to just sit and watch the whole video. Also, if you are already a good photographer, a professional photographer, and you come across this video, I encourage you to share this video with anybody you know who is trying to get started into photography. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing is light. Light is the most important thing that you need to understand if you're going to begin photography because photography is essentially painting with light. Now it is light that enables us to see everything that we see and the camera's function is just to control that light, the light that is reflecting from anything in our scene or anything we're trying to capture and capture that light on a sensor. That sensor now interprets that light and recreates the image for us to see as a photograph. And so you have to understand light because all of these camera sensors, whether it's a camera sensor in your, in your smartphone or whether it's a camera sensor in an action camera or in a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, their job is just to capture light. And so we have to know how to capture the light and shape it and make sure that it's hitting the sensor in the right amount so that it gets a very good and clear image. Light has different qualities, you know, that's the brightness of the light, that's the color of the light, that's the direction of the light. You have to understand all of these things. So you have to be able to look at a scene and know where your light is coming from, know how it's hitting the, the subject or the image, assess and evaluate if you need to increase the amount of light that is hitting your subject or reduce the amount of light. You have to understand things like the quality of the light, whether it is soft or hard. I would encourage you to really study what light is all about and especially in the context of photography. There are lots of tutorials out there on YouTube that talk about lighting in photography and you do well to pay attention to understanding how light really, really is the foundation of photography. So when you do that, it will help you to be able to maximize every opportunity when you're capturing photographs. Whether you're taking photographs with your smartphone, you will understand how the light is going to affect your image. If the light is not good enough, if the light is low, for instance, you know how to adjust the settings on your camera to maximize the light, or you know the type of images that you'll be able to take. If you're taking an image of someone moving quickly and you're in an area of low light, you know that you may have to either bring in an additional light, like a flashlight, or adjust the settings of a camera, or keep it on the tripod so that you get a good image. You know, there are so many things that will affect how you capture that image because of the available light. And again, it will also guide you into understanding the kind of lights you need to get as a beginner. Whether you need to get a speed light that you're going to put on top of your camera, or you're going to get a constant light, like a video light if you're shooting videos, you know, all of these things. So understanding light, very, very foundational to starting photography. So spend time observing light, looking at the light. Anytime you enter a room or a scene or at an event, try to 
pay attention to the lighting of the area of the subject. Look at how the light interacts with your subject. And the more you really study how light affects photography and how it interacts with your subject, the thing you're trying to capture, the more you'll be able to you know, appreciate or take advantage of opportunities to capture good images. Now you might have heard of this one, and that is the exposure triangle. And if you have not heard of it before, the exposure triangle is more or less like the foundation of using a camera to do photography. And it's even cut into videography essentially because the exposure triangle is the basis or the framework by which a camera manipulates light and is able to make images. So it's the backbone of photography. And the exposure triangle consists of three elements, the aperture, the ISO, and the shutter speed. And together, these three control how much light is entering into your camera and how your image will turn out. Now, aperture is essentially the opening within the lens, controls how much light is entering the camera through the lens, and it controls things like the depth of field, how much of your image is in focus. The shutter speed determines how quickly light is allowed to enter into the camera and record an image on your sensor. And it also controls things like how you're able to capture motion. So in sports photography, for instance, or where the subject is moving really fast, the shutter speed is what determines whether you're able to freeze that motion and capture it very cleanly and sharply, or whether you're going to have a blurry motion or blood effect. ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light. And so a low ISO means that your camera is not very sensitive to light. And in a low light setting, if you have a low ISO, your camera is not going to be able to pick up the available light. And so in a low light setting where the light is not really bright, you need to increase the sensitivity of your camera to light, which, is, which means raising the ISO. And when you raise the ISO, the camera is able to detect light better. However, raising the ISO also has its side effect, which is that it can cause your images to become very grainy because the camera is working hard to you know, capture the available light. And so generally speaking, in photography, you try to keep the ISO to minimum, depending on the capability of your cameras. So different cameras have different ISO capabilities or different ISO sensitivities. And so they're able to manage light in different ways. These three things, you need to learn how to balance them to take a well-exposed image. You have to make sure that your shutter speed is just right for the scene. If you're taking a picture of a fast-moving subject, you need to make sure that your shutter speed is adjusted accordingly. If you're taking a picture in a situation where the light, available light is very limited, maybe in the evening or in a dark room, you know, your shutter speed, your ISO, your aperture, all of these are affected. So like I said, it's not an in-depth tutorial, it's just a guide. The second thing you need to focus on if you really want to learn photography is learn the exposure triangle. You can Google it. There are many, many short tutorials, aids and quick tips and videos out there that will teach you everything you need to know about the exposure triangle. I would really suggest that you get learning that when I started photography, that was the most difficult part for me to learn. But once I was able to master it, it opened a whole new world for me. So yeah, it might sound a little bit complicated, but trust me, the more you stay with it, the more you begin to read and understand how ISO, shutter speed and aperture all interact, or the faster you will move towards improving your photography skills and becoming a photographer. Now, I think that the next thing you need to learn is understanding the dials and the buttons on your camera. Like I said, the camera's job is to capture light and it uses the exposure triangle, the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO, those three elements to balance or control the amount of light that is entering into the camera. And the way you control that exposure triangle is with all the dials and the buttons on the camera. There are other things that the dials and buttons do, you know, in terms of modifying the way the, the camera functions. But essentially, there are some key dials and key buttons on the camera that control the exposure triangle. Now, once you've learned or understood the exposure triangle, you now need to begin to understand how the manipulation of those camera dials affects the way you're able to control the exposure triangle. Not only that, there are other modes and dials on the camera that will also improve your ability to really handle the camera well. Now, the difference between a point and shoot camera or your smartphone and a professional DSLR camera is essentially that a professional camera has more controls and more dials and more buttons because it's trying to give you more control over the exposure triangle and other settings that affect the way light enters the camera. So spend time with your camera. If you bought a new camera, get the manual for that camera and begin to go through it or watch a tutorial on YouTube or 
find someone who can teach you and make you understand what this button does. This button reduces the shutter speed or increases the shutter speed. This dial increases the ISO or reduces the ISO. This dial ex increases the exposure or reduces the exposure and so on and so forth. You need to really spend time understanding all those very many dials on your camera. And even if you're using a camera phone, for instance, there are some smartphone cameras that have all those controls. You see the shutter speed, ISO, aperture and all of those things. You do well to learn all of those things. Whatever camera gear you're using, get to know it very well. Get to understand how it controls light. Get to know how you can manipulate it to control the available light and take great images. So that's the third thing I think you need to spend your time learning if you really want to get into photography. Now let's talk about focus. There's really nothing more frustrating, you know, than when you take a lot of pictures and then you know I find out that all the pictures are blurry, they're not in focus, they're not sharp. I know how frustrating that can be. I have seen people go out to cover events or meetings. Maybe they've been planning an event for a long time, a campaign, a, a photo walk, maybe like an international day, and they go out there and they take all these images and then they get back and see that the pictures are all blurry, they're not sharp. So next thing that you also need to learn is how to achieve sharp and clear focus. This is 2024. There are a lot of advancements in technology. Right now, you have things like touch to focus. So if you're using a phone camera, for instance, you can touch on the screen the particular area that you want the camera to focus and to focus. If you're using a mirrorless camera that has touch screen capabilities at the back, you can also touch to focus. But you also need to learn how to use the focus rings on the lens to achieve manual focus. You also have to learn how to adjust the settings in the camera to be able to track focus. So there are things like single focus, continuous autofocus, or just leaving it on auto settings, allowing the camera to dictate or determine what is the best setting to achieve focus. But it's very important that you understand how your camera achieves focus. For instance, even the way you press the shutter button. In some cameras, you need to press the shutter button halfway to trigger or to prompt the camera to be able to get the focus right once it gets the focus right, then you now click all the way and then the camera now takes the shot. Some beginners make that mistake and they just press and press and press without really understanding how the camera achieves focus. And then the camera is not able to achieve focus before the shot is taken. So there are some settings within the camera that will limit the camera from taking pictures if the subject is not in focus or that will allow the camera to take a picture whether or not there's anything in focus. You have to understand all of that. So this really is a direct fallout from the previous point, which is understanding how your camera works. If you spend time understanding how your camera works, then it will be easier for you to understand how to achieve focus. And also just understanding that you need to be able to achieve good focus to be able to make your picture to make sense. There's no point having a picture where everything is out of focus. There's no point having a picture where the main subject is out of focus. I've seen pictures where maybe in a group shot, you're trying to take a picture of all the people at the back of a cake. Maybe they're taking a picture for a cake and then you take a picture and the cake is in focus, but every other person's face is not in focus. Even things like the aperture, the aperture value can affect focus because like remember we said that aperture determines how much of the image is in focus. So you see, when you understand your exposure triangle, when you understand your camera settings and the camera modes and dials and the buttons on the camera, it will be easier for you to begin to understand how to achieve good focus. And the last thing that I would recommend that you spend time learning is composition and framing, which is essentially how you compose your picture, how you place your subject within the frame. It's very, very important. And I think once you've understood all the other things I've talked about, you now begin to focus on this. I'm going to take a picture of this flower. How am I placing that flower within the frame? Am I placing it within the rule of thirds. So you get to hear things like the rule of thirds. You get to hear things about balance and symmetry, placing your image in a way that is well balanced within the frame and has good symmetry. You get to hear things about leading lines. You get to hear things about other compositional techniques. You know, so those are all things that will affect how you frame your subject. When you're studying about composition and framing, you understand how to remove distracting elements from the frame. So you're trying to take a picture of a person Meanwhile, at the corner of the image, somebody is there, but the person is cutting. You know, maybe it's just part of the person that is showing. All of these things can elevate or reduce the quality and the aesthetic appeal of your image. So the fifth thing is to learn composition and framing. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube 
that will teach you about how to f how best to frame your picture. There are lots of tutorials out there that will show you or give you some of the basic principles like the rule of thirds and all of those things. So I think it's really important that you spend time learning how to compose and how to frame your image. You know, things about shooting angles, like which angle to shoot from. If you're taking a picture of a child, for instance, you know, what are the best angles to shoot from? Things like um, keeping it simple, you know, keeping the distracting elements to the barest minimum and choosing your backgrounds, choosing uh, your foreground. All of those things are very, very important in composition and framing. And it's very important that you learn how to do composition and framing as you're going along your photography journey. So, all right, you've gotten those five very essential things that you need to learn. I'm going to give you three bonus tips to really improve your photography or to really move you along in your journey because you're just starting photography. Now, the first thing is editing. Learn how to do some basic editing. It's really just part of the program, part of photography, that um, at some point or the other, you're going to have to learn how to edit your images because especially when you're capturing your images with a professional camera a lot of times the camera is capturing everything in its raw form and there are little tweaks you may want to do to make your picture more aesthetic or more pleasing to the eye you know you might want to turn it into a black and white image you might want to increase the contrast or increase the saturation of the colors you might want to reframe it or crop it you know these are all little little things that you may want to do to really make your image stand out and i'll recommend some editing apps that you can quickly download and install you can install Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom on the mobile phone. For instance, Adobe Lightroom, you can just install it and start using it. Snapseed is another one. Um, Photoscape is another app that you can download. And um, if you have, if you're willing to spend some money, you can go all out and search for the more advanced um, editing tools. But if you want to keep it simple, even your phone, if you transfer your images to your phone, most phones, the gallery or the picture app have inbuilt editors that you can do to make some minor tweaks but if you want to take it a step further you can download adobe lightroom mobile you can download snapseed um, you can download photoscape on a desktop and so on and so forth there are so many of them out there now the second tip i'll give you is to expose yourself to the work of other photographers this is something that really helped me so much when i started photography and that is to just take time out to go out there on the internet and see what other photographers are doing join photographic communities like 500pixels.com. That was one of the communities I joined very early on that really inspired me. Apart from, you know, checking out the pages of photographers on Instagram. When you see the images that they create, spend time studying those images. Why, why did they compose it this way? How did they achieve this kind of lighting? How did they achieve this kind of simplicity? How did they use the leading lines and the rule of thirds? You know, all the things you're learning about photography, you can now begin to observe and see and reflect as you observe other people's work and, you know remember to take notes and you know remember to try to recreate some of the things you're seeing because that's the way you learn by trying to recreate what other people are doing in your own way and trying to study other people's work study great photographs out there study the photographs of other people out there maybe on instagram facebook or like i said if you join 500pixels.com and other photography communities you'd be seeing amazing works of other photographers and this is going to increase your appreciation of what a good photograph really is it's going to increase your visual intelligence and you'll be able to you know start thinking about how you want to compose your own images and that leads me to the last bonus tip which is practice 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 there is no getting good with photography if you don't practice when i started photography my camera was always with me i was always taking pictures of everything cup on the table um, a laptop on the desk, um, a flower in the garden, people walking on the streets, you know, whatever it is, clouds in the sky, the sunset, the trees, you know, just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. If you have friends, family, neighbors, take portraits of them, ask them to sit by the window because you, you're studying about lighting and you can see that there's a beautiful soft light coming through the window and you, you want to try to use that to take portraits, ask someone, a friend, so, you know to volunteer sit by the window take pictures take different angles you have a pet a dog a cat you know take pictures of all of these things take still life photos take take macro photos take pictures of landscape nature you need to practice 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 don't buy that camera and just keep it in the cupboard i know your excuse might be that okay the camera is too big and um, it's all so complicated but trust me if you think it's complicated the best way to unravel that complication is to carry your camera and start shooting all the time. 
in another video i'm going to talk about the cameras that i think are the best for beginners especially in 2024 and i'll be naming some specific cameras that i would suggest that you look out and check out and see maybe you'd buy and also in other videos i'm going to go into a little bit more depth on some of the things i've talked about in this video just to help you along that journey in case you're really deciding to take photography seriously this year in 2024 i hope this video has been helpful like i said it's not an in-depth tutorial it's just a guide signposts you know on the way to becoming a good photographer this year i mentioned five things that you need to focus on the first thing is understanding light the second thing is understanding the exposure triangle the third thing is understanding your camera whatever device you're using to take pictures try to understand how that device you know works in order to create images the fourth thing is learning about focus and making sure that you know how your camera can achieve focus and how to achieve focus so that your pictures are sharp and clear yeah. and then the fifth thing is composition and framing learning how to compose your image frame your image to make sure that you're getting great images all right thanks for watching catch you in the next video